What's up guys, it's Adrian Chavez with personaltrainingprep.com and I put together this short video to explain joint movements. So joint movements or joint specific movements are biomechanical terms that you're going to need to know when you're studying for a personal training certification exam and when you're training for clients. So this is basically just a way to explain exercises and it's the proper terminology to use. So when you're bending your arm, you're not saying you're bending your arm, you're using the proper biomechanical term which is flexion of the elbow. So you're not bending your arm, you're flexing your elbow. You're not, um, you're not raising your arm here, you're abducting your shoulder. Okay, and we'll talk about these terms in a second. But it's just a, a more cohesive way to when you're uh, communicating with other fitness professionals that you can describe an exercise. Because just saying bending your arm can mean a number of different things. Or saying raising your arm can mean a number of different things. So when you use the right proper biomechanical terms, you can explain it properly and other people know what you're talking about. Okay, so we're now gonna get into it. The first two, um, first two joint movements that I'm gonna explain is flexion and extension. So flexion, the definition of that is when the angle between two bones is reduced. So flexion is when the angle between two bones, so you talk about the, the two bones that make up the elbow joint, um, the angle is being reduced when I'm flexing my elbow. So when I'm contracting my bicep concentrically, my elbow flexes. When I do the eccentric contraction of my bicep, the elbow extends. So extension is the opposite, it's an increase in the angle between two joints. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is adduction and abduction. So adduction, A-D-D-U-C-T-I-O-N, adduction. So this is a, uh, when you're moving away from the midline, or excuse me, adduction is when you're moving towards the midline of the body. Abduction, A-B-D-U-C-T-I-O-N, is when you're moving away from the midline of the body. Okay, so you, if you think about the midline, just cut your body in half, right where the center of your abs are, the middle of your chest, and any movement that's moving away from the midline is gonna be abduction, abduction. Anything that's moving towards the midline is gonna be adduction. There's a couple of different types of adduction and abduction. There's vertical and horizontal. So vertical is at this movement right here. So I'm doing vertical, moving away from the midline, so you see my Arms are starting closer to the midline, moving away from the midline. So it's vertical abduction. When I'm going back down, it's vertical adduction. Okay, now for horizontal, when I have my arms here and I'm moving this direction, I'm going towards the midline. So that's adduction. Horizontal adduction, horizontal abduction. You can do this at the shoulder joint. You can also do it at the hip joint as well. Um, the other terms that I'm going to explain are rotation. So rotation is the twisting of a joint. You can do that in your wrist, you can do that in your lower leg, and you can do that in the uh, spine, so you can rotate those three areas. So it's just a twisting of a joint. A lot of times people get this confused with another term called circumduction. Circumduction is a circular movement. So look at the difference here. Circumduction, this is a circular movement, Rotation, it's a twisting movement. Okay, so just know the difference between those two. You may not, you may not see it too often. Mainly, you're gonna to need to know these um, in personal training certification exams when you're looking at, uh, you're explaining exercises. And they'll ask you a multiple choice question, what movements happen during this exercise? So during the bench press exercise, which movements are happening? So during the, the concentric phase of the bench press exercise, when you're lifting the weight up, you're pushing away from the body, at the shoulder joint and at the elbow joint, you have movements occurring. So at the shoulder joint, you have adduction, horizontal adduction of the shoulder, and at the elbow joint, you have extension of the elbow. Okay, so when you're doing a, let's use another example, when you're doing a squat. So when you're doing a squat, you're going down, you're flexing of the knees, and I know you can't see this right now, I'm just gonna explain it. You're flexing of the knees, and you're flexing of the hip joint. Um, you're also doing a little bit of flexion at the ankle. And I want to explain the ankle because that one's, uh, that one's a little different as well. So the ankle doesn't actually flex and extend. The ankle, the, ankle, uh, the movements of the ankle are actually called dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So plantar flexion is when you're raising up on your tippy toes. And dorsiflexion is when you're uh, putting your toes towards your body. And if you're on the ground, your heel would be on the ground. But if you're off of the ground, it would just be when you're pointing your toes towards your body. So plantar flexion, 
raising up on your toes, dorsiflexion when you're raising and you're bringing your toes towards your body. Um, the other uh, movement, or it's not even necessarily a movement, it's more of a um, position, but it's something that you're going to need to know, is pronation and supination. And there's two ways that you might see it on an exam, so they talk about grip. So a pronated grip and your wrists are pronated when your thumbs are closer to your body. So anytime you look, if your thumbs are closer to your body, so if you grab a bar right here, that's called a pronated grip. Okay, if you grab a bar here, pronated grip. If you grab it here, pronated grip. Supinated grip is when your thumbs are pointed away from your body. So this is gonna be a supinated grip. If you do a supinated grip up here, you almost will never do that in any exercise, but just know, thumbs away from the body, that's supinated. Thumbs toward the body, that's pronated. Pronated and supinated are also used to describe your entire body in the direction, and it's usually when you're laying down. So if you're laying down and you're laying down on your stomach, that's called, that's called being laying prone. If you're laying down on your back, that's called a supine position. Um, and that's pretty much it. You're probably going to see some of these on the exam. Make sure you understand the, uh, make sure you understand the movements, and make sure you can describe how to do a specific exercise and what movements are occurring. So when you do a shoulder press, this is something. And I, I took the ACS, ACSM exam recently, and this is something I saw is um, during a shoulder press, what movements are occurring during the concentric phase. So when you're lifting the weight up above your body, what's happening? What's happening at the shoulder joint? Vertical abduction, so you're going away from the midline. And then what's happening at the elbow joint? That's going to be extension. So as long as you know how to describe those, you feel comfortable with those, you should be good. Um, I'm speaking specifically to the ACSM exam. I haven't taken the NSCA exam or any of the other exams. Um, but I do know that the ACSM exam is going to require you to have a good knowledge of the movements and be able to describe exercises using those movements. All right, so thanks for watching the video through the whole thing. If you want more information, if you're preparing to take a personal training certification exam, go to personaltrainingprep.com. I have a little bit more resources there. I'm slowly building things up as we go. Um, and if you like this video, please share it with someone else that may benefit from it. Leave a comment below if you have any feedback. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.